All right. Carbon compounds, like we've been studying, react fairly well with halogens. And so we need a way to name things that have had a halogen clamp onto them. The halogens you'll see are on the second column from the right in your periodic table, and the stack starts with fluorine, and underneath that are chlorine, bromine, iodine. And technically under that is astatine, which is also a halogen, but all the all the astatine in the entire world you could hold in the palm of your hand. There's virtually none of it, and it's highly dispersed through the Earth's crust. So basically we don't have any astatine, and you can expect to go through your entire life without ever running into an astatine compound. So we're not going to talk about astatides, but we are going to talk about fluorides, chlorides, bromides, and iodides. And when we want to talk about all of those at once, they play a little trick where they take the word halogen and they pretend it's a chemical and they say if this were an ion and we changed its ending to ide, then it would be called a halide or a halide. So when they're talking about ha halides, they mean anything that's been reacted with fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. That's what we're dealing with here. If you have that happen to a chemical of yours, then you're going to say that there's a certain number of each of those ions attached, and the names that we use for them are going to be fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iodo. So if you have methane with a fluorine attached to it, you call it fluoromethane. This goes out front. If there's several of them, then you say where they're attached, and you'll say things like 1,2-dichloroethane, or 2,2,5-trichlooctane, things like that. So you say how many of these groups there are, and then you say where they're attached, just like with anything else. If there are multiple halogens attached to a single molecule, then you give them an alphabetical order. So all of those are things you might have guessed just from how our other rules work, but let's get them get in here and apply them and see what that feels like. So you know the drill for this. The first concern is not all the branches and stuff, it's the actual primary chain, which in this case is a hexagon, so we call it what? Six carbons means hex. All single bonds means it's hexane. When it's wrapped around into a ring, we call it cyclohexane. Now, what's on this? Well, there's a methyl group. So, based on that, we could call this methyl cyclohexane. Also, there are two bromines attached to it. So this is dibromo Dibromomethylcyclohexane is most of the name. What's missing from this is the locations. We have to give numbers for where all these things are connected. And there's no numbers in the cyclohexane part, so we haven't established our numbering yet, but we have to decide it now. The first numbers people are going to see here are the dibromo ones, so one of these has to be carbon number one. If we go clockwise, then these will be 1 and 3. If we go the long way around, these will be 1 and, what, 4? Even worse, 1, 5. So 1, 3 is definitely how we want to do this. This is carbon number 1. And then we go clockwise around. So 1, 3, dibromo, and then the methyl group is on carbon number 4. So 4 methyl. 1, 3, dibromo, 4 methyl cyclohexane. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. The primary here is a six carbon chain in a straight line. Six means hexane again. And yes, I mean hexane because it's all single bonds over there. I didn't see any doubles. And there is a chloro, a chlorine. So it's chlorohexane. And the last question is, where is the chlorine? It's on the second carbon. So, 2-chlorohexane. This has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbons, so it is heptane. All single bonds. 
There are two fluorines attached to it, so difluoroheptane is a little closer to the truth. And where are they? There's none on the first carbon, but there's one on carbon number two and one on carbon number three. So 2,3-difluoroheptane. Uh, what does this thing have? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's got to be our primary right through the middle. So this is hexane, because it's six carbons, all singles. Now, what's attached to it? We have a bromine, and we have two methyl groups. That starts with M, that starts with M, that starts with B. So the bromine first, and we want it to have the lowest number possible, so it's going to be 3-bromo. And then we have two methanes, and they're both on carbon number four. So four, four, dimethyl. Three bromo, four, four, dimethyl hexane. How about this thing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons, all single bonds. That is heptane. Now, what's on it? There's a bromine here that starts with B. There are two fluorines here. Those start with F. So the bromine comes first. The bromine's on the third carbon, so this will be 3-bromo again. And then on the second carbon, we have the two fluorines. So 2-2-difluoroheptane. Okay, and I'll do this all in one go because it's going reasonably fast. Now it's our turn to draw. 2-chloropentane. Pentane means five carbons. Da, da, three, four, five. On the second carbon, put a chlorine. Not too bad. 2-2-dichloropropane. Propane's three carbons. Put two chlorines both on the second carbon. So that's a Cl and that's a Cl. 1,2-dichlorobenzene. Haven't drawn a benzene in a little bit, but that's all right. There's a benzene, and now carbons 1 and 2 have chlorines on them. So chlorine there, chlorine there. 1,3-dichlorocyclopentane. OK, cyclopentane means five carbons in a ring. Da, da, da. There we are. Now, carbons 1 and 3 have fluorines on them. So there's a fluorine. That's carbon number 2. It doesn't get anything. And carbon number 3 gets a fluorine. And, oh my, 2-phenyl-3-fluoro-octane. OK, so all this can wait. Octane means 8 carbons. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The second carbon has a phenyl group attached to it, which means it has a benzene attached to it. And the third carbon has a fluorine on it. So there it is in structural form. Now if we do line diagram, let's see, eight carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay. The second carbon has a phenyl group on it, so just the way that this happens to zigzag now, I'm, ha I'm ending up putting the benzene on top instead of on the bottom where I had it in the structural diagram. That doesn't really matter. There's a halfway sort of respectable hexagon, only not really. And there's no simplified symbol for a fluorine. If you're going to show a fluorine in a line structural, you simply have to go F.